द बृहद अरण्य उपनिषद इन सिंपल इंग्लिश पार्ट 15 ऑफ 15 खिला कांड एंड द उपनिषद कंक्लूडेड चैप्टर 6 सेक्शंस 4 एंड 5 दिस पार्ट डील्स विद द प्रोक्रिएशन सेरेमनीज एंड गिव्स द लाइन ऑफ टीचर्स एंड पीपल्स इन ब्रीफ द अर्थ इज द एसेंस ऑफ ऑल दीज बीइंग्स the essence of earth is water the essence of water is plants the essence of plants is flowers the essence of flowers is fruit the essence of fruit is man and the essence of man is semen which is the seed then prajapati the creator thought to himself i should now make a firm basis for man and his seed let me make an abode let me make a dwelling for him so he can procreate with that in mind he created woman and having created her he revered her so one should always revere women the woman is the sacrificial altar and the act of making love to a woman is a sacred act it is just like performing a sacrifice he who knows this and then makes love to a woman accordingly he wins a world as great as the one which the performers of the great vajpayee sacrifice win the vajpayee sacrifice as we all know is the biggest of all the sacrifices and he also takes to himself the fruits of all the good deeds of the woman but he who without knowing this makes love to a woman then the fruits of all his good deeds are taken away by the woman instead this is what uddalak aruni nak modgalya and kumar harit knew when they said many mortal men even those who are brahmins by birth make the mistake of making love to women without knowing this and by doing so they go out from this world important and devoid of merit one should never spill one seed if one should happen to spill even a drop of his semen he should seek it, he should seek to reclaim it by reciting whatever seed of mine has spilt on earth whatever has flowed to the plants whatever has flowed to the water i reclaim all that may vigor come to me again may luster come to me again may glow come to me again may the fire of the sacrificial altars be found again in their usual place now if one should see one's own reflection in water he should recite the following hymn may the gods bestow luster vigor fame wealth and merit on me a woman the wife is lovely and beautiful when she has shed the soiled clothes of her impurity and put on fresh ones therefore when she has done that and is beautiful again the man should approach her and request her to grant him his desire if she does not grant him his desire he should try to buy her over with presents if she still does not grant him his desire he should say with manly power and glory i take away your glory thus her glory is taken away from her and she becomes devoid of glory and merit and is discredited if however she grants him his desire he should say with power and glory i give you glory then both of them man and woman have glory then both of them become glorious if one desires a woman thinking may she enjoy love with me he should recite you my seed that have come from every limb who have sprung from the heart you are the essence of the limbs distract this woman here woman here and bring her under my control as if she has been pierced by a poisoned arrow 
Now if a man desires a woman but does not want her to conceive, he should first inhale and then exhale and then while making love to her he should say, With power, with seed, I reclaim the seed from you. Thus she comes to be without seed and does not conceive. And if a woman and if a man desires a woman and wants her to conceive, he should first exhale and then inhale. And then while making love to her he should say, With power, with seed, I deposit my seed in you. Then she conceives and becomes pregnant. If a man's wife has a lover whom he hates and whom he wishes to injure, he should put fire in an unbaked pot and spread out a layer of reed arrows in an inverse order. And then he should offer in inverse order these reed arrows dipped in clarified butter, dipped in ghee in the fire as sacrifice saying, you who have sacrificed in my fire, I take away your life breaths, I take away your pran and apan, I take away your sons and cattle, I take away your meritorious deeds, I take away all your hopes and expectations. If a Brahman who knows this curses someone, then that person departs from this world impotent and devoid of merit. Therefore, one should never flirt with the wife of one who is learned in the Vedas and who knows this. For indeed, one who knows this is a very dangerous enemy and should be avoided. Now when the monthly sickness comes upon one's wife, then for three days and nights she should not drink from a bronze cup, nor should she put on fresh clothes. Neither a low caste man nor a low caste woman should touch her. At the end of three days and nights, after she has taken a bath, she should be made to thresh rice. She should be made to pound rice. Now we come to the verses concerning the kinds of children one may wish to have and what should be done to get such offspring. If one desires a son of a fair complexion, who would study the Ved and live to a ripe old age, then man and wife should have rice cooked with milk and eat it with clarified butter which is ghee, then they would be able to have such a son. If one desires a son of tawny or of brown complexion, who would study the two Vedas and live to a ripe old age, then man and wife should have rice cooked in curd and eat it with clarified butter which is ghee. Then they would be able to have such a son. If one desires a son of a dark complexion with red eyes who would study the three Vedas and live to a ripe old age, then man and wife should have rice cooked in water and eat it with ghee which is clarified butter. Then they would be able to have such a son. And if one desires a learned daughter who would live to a ripe old age, then man and wife should have rice cooked with sesame, cooked with till and eat it with ghee which is clarified butter, then they should be able to have such a daughter. And if one desires a son who is learned, who is famous, who is a public person, who speaks delightful words, who would study all the Vedas and who would live to a ripe old age, then man and wife should have rice cooked in meat and eat it with ghee. Then they would be able to have such a son. Then in the morning, the man prepares clarified butter according to the method of pot cooked food. After preparing the butter, he takes the pot of cooked food of the fire and makes an offering saying, To fire, hail! To Anumati, the female divine giver of favours, hail! To the radiant sun, the creator of truth, hail! 
after he has made this offering he takes up the remains of the cooked food and eats it after he has eaten he offers the rest of the remaining food to his wife he then washes his hands and fills the water vessel with water he then sprinkles water from the vessel thrice on his wife saying get up from here o viswavasu o god of love go from here and seek out another young woman a wife with her husband then he embraces his wife saying i am the vital breath and you are the speech you are the speech and i am the vital breath i am the sam you are the rig i am the heaven you are the earth come let us strive together that we may have a male child then they heaven and earth unite and he says let the almighty vishnu prepare the womb for making it capable of bearing a son let twastra the master craftsman give shape to the various limbs let prajapati the creator pour in the seed let dhatra let brahma support the embryo o sinivali o goddess so beautiful to see o you the one with broad tresses make her conceive make her conceive let the two ashwins the heavenly healers crowned with lotus wreaths support and take care of the embryo the two ashwins create a twirling flame with two attrition sticks of gold it is such a germ it is such a seed we beg of you to be brought out in the 10th month the earth contains the germ the seed of fire the heaven is pregnant with the storm the air is the germ of the quarters of space in the same way i place my seed in you my wife then when she is about to give birth to the child he sprinkles her with water saying just as the wind agitates a lotus pond on every side even so let your fetus stir forth and come out along with its corian this is indra's fold and has been made with a strong covering and closed around it to protect the child o indra o lord cause this to come out at birth along with the child when the child is born the father prepares the fire he takes the baby in his lap and puts curd and ghee in a bronze cup he then makes an oblation again and again with the curd and ghee saying may i increase in this child of mine and may i nourish a thousand in my home may fortune never depart from the line of this child and may he always have offspring and cattle hail i offer to you with my mind all the vital forces that are in me whatever work i may have done be it too much or too little may the all knowing and beneficent agni make up all the deficiencies and defects in my work and make all my work fit and good for us hail then putting his mouth near the child's right ear he initiates him saying thrice speech 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 then mixing curd honey and ghee he feeds him out of a spoon of gold not placing the spoon within the mouth saying i place in you the earth i place in you the atmosphere i place in you heaven i place in you everything the earth the atmosphere and heaven then he gives the child a name saying you are ved so this becomes his secret name then he presents the child to the mother and puts him to her breast saying o goddess saraswati your breast which is unfailing and refreshing which is wealthy 
abundant and generous and with which you nourish all worthy beings give that breast of yours here to my wife for my child to suckle from then he addresses the mother of the baby you are ila descended from mitra and varun protectors of the righteous order of the universe being yourself a heroine you have given birth to a hero you have given us a hero son may you be the mother of many more such heroes of such a son they say you have gone beyond your father you have gone beyond your grandfather truly such a son has reached the highest point in prosperity he has reached the highest point in fame and in the radiance of spirit one who is born as the son of a learned brahman one who is born as the son of a knower of brahm one who knows this now we come to the line of teachers and pupils the son of potimasi received the teaching from the son of katyayani who got it from the son of gautami who received it from the son of bhardwaji and so on till we come to asuri who got it from yagyavalkya who received it from uddalak who received it from arun who got it from upavesi who received it from kusri who got it from vajashravas who got it from jihavant bad yog who got it from asit varsagn who got it from harit kashyap who got it from shilpa kashyap who obtained it from kashyap nadhruvi who got it from vak that is speech who got it from ambhini who got it from aditya the sun till we come to the son of sanjeevi who obtained this knowledge from mandukaini who got it from mandavya who got it from kotsya who obtained this knowledge from mahithi who in turn got it from vam kaksayan who obtained it from shandilya who got this knowledge from vatsya who got it from kusri who obtained it from yagyavachas rajasthambayan who himself got it from tura kavaseya who got the teaching from prajapati who in turn got it from brahma himself brahma is the self existent adoration to brahma end of chapter 6 end of khilakand end of part 15 end of brihad aranyak upanishad om shanti shanti shanti